All right, that's it. Blessed love again, people. This is a part two of part one. Imagine you live in this world and somebody I tell you, you can't do this job or you can't live where you live. Imagine that. Well, you see, a data go on in certain places, especially in the Caribbean. And one of the main culprits is Jamaica. Jamaica have one of the most prehistorical dinosaurs living on that island. They stick to one thing, and I don't even think they understand what they are doing. Here, for a fact, as I was saying, just because a man chooses to be a ear stylist, they are going to tell him that he can't do that because that's not protocol. That's not how black man do things. How, do, how does black man do things? How does black man live? Hey, listen up. You see the same thing that you see some Jamaican, some Caribbean people, and some reggae artists, what they fight against and burn out in Jamaica. You see, when most of these people come overseas and most of them come to live, do you know that they come and do the very same thing that they were burning out in the Caribbean and in Jamaica and in the black community? Do you know that? They come here and they have to do that to make a living. So I don't know why people think that, oh, you can tell somebody what to do or how to live. Who give you that right? How dare you tell someone they can't do what they love? Do you know, sir? In other words, that's bullying. You're actually bullying the person. It's called bullying anguish because the person is living in anguish. That's why there are so many desolated people and depressed people in Jamaica because what they love and what they want to do and what they were born to do, they can't because society is telling them that if they do that, they'll be branded and labeled. That's why there are so many unhappy people in the Caribbean and especially in Jamaica. Look at their faces. Everybody is depressed. Nobody is happy. And you know why? Because they can't do what they want to do. They can't do what they love. And that's why you see a lot of Jamaicans and Caribbean people and black people on a whole, they are glad for an aeroplane because an aeroplane take them to another country and they, you know what? They get to see other culture and see that nothing is wrong with what they choose in life to do and what they love because they come here and they experience different culture, different people. So let me tell you, even some of these dancehall artists that you see who burn out certain things in Jamaica and burn out certain people, when they come to the foreign country, they walk beside that same people. They sit and they smoke with them same people. They sit and they eat with the same people. They drive around in their cars. And they even go to their nightclubs to remember what I am saying to you. This is not me just talking sideways. This is reality. Some of these artists who burn out certain people, they come here and they walk around with them. And then you know what? When night comes, they go to their clubs. And you know why they do that? Because they realize that reggae music alone can feed them and and all their fans who don't buy a record, buy a CD, or download any kind of music, <laughs> they realize if they stick to certain people, they'll starve. So you know what they do? They come and they realize that, yo, you know something? The very first same thing that I am burning out. Actually, these people are the ones who are putting money in my pocket. So you know what they do? They come and they do what they got to do. 
I'm not saying that they take the next step. No, they come and they make their monies and they go. But to me, that's hypocritical because when they go back to the Caribbean or to Jamaica, they put up this hardcore facade like they're tough. But when they come to foreign, they're like sheep. So don't let them fool you and stop you from doing what you want to do. As long as you enjoy what you're doing, love what you're doing, do it. Because if it brings you peace and prosperity, happiness, you can go to bed and sleep peacefully. Do what you do. Do what you love to do. Do not let society tell you what to do. Do not let society yet you live in misery. Do not let society let you get the most dangerous disease. It's worse than cancer. It's worse than any disease in the world. You know what I'm talking? Depression. If you get too depressed, you can end up hurting yourself or killing yourself. So, if you love doing something, do it. If you're good at it, do it. Don't let society dictate how you can live. Release that mental chain. That's why I would love a lot of Jamaican, a lot of Caribbean people to travel all over the world. And they'll see that what they are condemning and burning out. There's nothing wrong with doing what you love. If you can do what you love, it's better if you just... You know what I mean? I'm not going to say it. It's better if you do that. Okay? Because if you're living on hurt and you can't do what you want to do, you can't enjoy life. You can't be free. You're worried if somebody over there is going to come beat you up. Somebody's going to shoot you. Or somebody's going to condemn you. You're worried about, oh, you know something? I'm not supposed to do this because society dictates. You know what I mean? Most of the Caribbean and Jamaica, they're all ban wagonists. If one says something, everybody line up behind that person. Nobody can think for themselves. They're like robots nowadays, these people, because they have people telling them how to live. Nobody can tell me how to live. Nobody can tell me what to do. Nobody. I do what I want to do. And I love doing what I am doing. So I'm letting other people know it's okay. Do what you want to do. If it makes you happy, do it. Don't let society dictate how you live and what you do. As long as you're not breaking the law and your mind and your conscience set you free, do what you love. Do not be caught up in this. Don't let society dictate. Don't let nobody who give them the freaking right to do that. And I say that without no apology. Peace.